Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our E-Class estate. Then I'll take you for riding it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 2-litre E220D AMG line premium. G-Tronic, it's Euro 6 engine, 2017 on a 17 plate, one registered owner, 37,412 miles. Last serviced 7th of 3rd, 2022 at 32,885 miles. Fuel consumption, urban 57.7 miles per gallon, extra urban 64.2 miles per gallon, and combined is 61.4 miles per gallon. So fantastic fuel economy there. Has a top speed of 146 miles per hour, out of 191 brake horsepower, four cylinder, 16 valve engine. So we've got keyless entry, keyless go. Um, when you get out of the car, as long as you've got the key on you, if you just touch that little square there on the handle with your thumb, car locks, door mirrors fold in, that's it. You come back to it, again, as long as you've got the key on you, put your hand behind there, opens it up, and that's it, you're just in. Press the button and you're away. It's got the AMG 5 twin spoke alloys, they're dark silver and diamond cut, shod with uh, Goodyear Eagle tyres too, and the silver Mercedes-Benz brake calipers and uh, ventilated discs. The Mercedes-Benz LED performance headlights. It has the grill that I prefer. The latest one is, is made up of a, a load of little silver bits which are, are meant to look like jewels. This looks like a Mercedes. It's in your rear view mirror. Get out of my way, I'm coming past. That, that's what a Mercedes-Benz should look like with a big Mercedes-Benz badge on the front. It has front parking sensors. This car will also park itself and, and quite unusually, when a car has auto parking, you usually have to cover the brake and you usually have to stop it. When you've reversed in far enough, it tells you to stop it and it tells you to change gear. This doesn't. It brakes itself, it changes gear, and then it starts going forward on its own. It's quite spooky, really. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there. I'll cut, I'll cut that in, um, which I did yesterday. Okay, I'm just going to show you how to work the auto parking system in this. 2017 Mercedes-Benz E-Class, uh, it, it is quite spooky because it actually brakes you as well. Uh, you do have to stand by and cover the brake, but anyway, let, let's just kind of get on with it. So if I put that in drive, press the parking, it says drive forwards to search for parking space. So it's searching for parking space. Stop the vehicle to park, confirm to park, so confirm. Engage reverse gear, reverse gear is there. This is the scary bit. So I am covering the brake, but, well, I've not got my foot on the brake at all. So let's just see what happens here. So I, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching anything. It's slowing down. Okay. I, I've not, <laughs> it scares me to death, honestly. I never touched the brake, I never touched the steering wheel. It's plonked me right in the middle of that space. It's uh, not, you know, not a particularly tight one, but even so, most people would struggle to get in it. I didn't touch the brake, didn't touch the steering, parked perfectly. Um, it is a good system. <laughs> Got the chrome window surrounds this aluminium roof bar carrier system it has the panoramic roof and it's a tilt slide electric glass roof as well so that that comes back really handy rear privacy glass uh, again chrome trims on the doors white and chrome it, it's, it's quite a good combination uh, to be fair I, I, i'm pretty old school as you probably know by now and i prefer the chrome to black but who knows? Has the integrated rear tailgate spoiler. Again, reversing sensors on the bottom. Um, just under here, there's a reversing camera. The reversing camera only comes down when you put it in reverse. It 
comes down on a little motor, which is a, I think is a, a quite a clever idea. And uh, has power open boot, power close. That works from the key or the, the switch at the bottom. Again, this is a clever idea. When the tailgate up, goes up, the roller blind rear load cover, that goes up too. So I often find myself, when I'm loading my camera bag in, in other vehicles, I have to open the roller blind, stick my camera bag in, then pull it back. With this, you've got kind of a cavernous opening there. So that, that's all, all good too. Nice flat load area. Forward of the uh, load cover, this kind of a parcel net, stop things flying forward. It make a, a handy dog guard too, if your dog wasn't like mine and would have chewed through it in an instant because it's made out of like cotton or something. Also, another good idea, little buttons at both sides. You just click the button, the seat flies down inside. You don't have to do anything else. That, that's a great idea. I'll just show you that. And that's to uh, close the boot. That's where the camera is. Rear wash wipe, tinted glass in the back. Real nice looking. Easy enough to put the seat back up. Also just here, there's another little switch. So if you want to put the back seat down from here, well, it's just quick to show you. You just click the switch again and that's it. It goes down. So, very nice in the back here, looks like new, has the Mercedes-Benz Artico leather or half Artico leather and the Alcantara in the centre. Very, very stylish. The twin panoramic glass sunroof, bags of room in the back. I have just put my seat forward, uh, I've got dirty feet. I didn't want to catch the back of the seat uh, and, and have lunch shout at me. So. Um, my seat is a little bit forward, but there's still bags of room in the back here. And uh, you've got the rear child seat Isofix anchor points it, under plastic covers here. And contrast stitching, it's had mats in from new. Really, really nice example. You, if there was no number plates on it, you'd, you'd think it was a new car. You may be able to see from there, <laughs> you, you know I'm not a big fan of mood lighting or whatever they call it. Uh, what's that other name for it? I can't remember. It's such a stupid invention. But anyway, this has got it. It's it's set to red, and I got in it last night to to come home, and it looked really good. I, I must admit, it looked very very good. I, it's so good, I even took photographs of it, and and I'll, I'll remember to cut some of that in too. So it's like I've always said, moonlight, <laughs> not moonlighting, mood lighting, <laughs> fantastic invention. Okay, I'll just take you for a ride in it. Oh dear. Don't wear gloves, Baz, you look stupid. That's the Mercedes-Benz key there. It's uh, keyless ignition or keyless start. So foot on the brake, that's the button there. And that's it, burst into life. I'm gonna to remember to tell you the service history today. So we've got 6th of the 3rd, 2018 at 8,549 miles, Mercedes-Benz. 19th of the 3rd, 2019 at 15,743 miles Mercedes-Benz, 10th of the 3rd, 2021, at 27,394 miles Howitson and Partington, 7th of the 3rd, 2022, at 32,885 miles Howitson and Partington. Mercedes-Benz, that must be a Mercedes garage. Uh, John's put that history down. It'll be a Mercedes-Benz garage but it won't, probably won't show which one on the digital service history. Uh, a little bit of a drawback. Now, this car's got Apple CarPlay as well. Um, charging lead into the right plug in the center armrest. Then 
into your phone and then that's it you never need to touch your phone again while you're driving you can do absolutely everything you want send text read text just tell it where you want to go call people play music you name it you you can do it it's it's a fantastic system that's it there and it, it's worked from here um having said that i, I I've got to be honest, I don't really like the cable sticking out, so I'm going to put that in there out of the way and, and hope all my cameras keep working with my phone in there. You've got two things, you've got the touchpad here that you can move about and direct it, direct the cursor on your screen or you can use this, that bit there. Um, I think you might even be able to use these touchpads somewhere on that touchpad look moving that up and down this touchpad click that on home it'll probably be on another thing but anyway um as i say that that's showing me how far away from home i am already it's just it's just really a brilliant system that's the seat belt tightening you can knock that off it uh, you you put the seat belt on and it makes sure it's pulled against your body so it, it pulls back a little bit but as i say i i find it a bit disconcerting and, and i usually knock that off um, let's take it to a different that's consumption and you can see here it, it 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 will also show you when you're not using power and you're actually putting power back into the battery the Mercedes-Benz gear selector is on the right hand side there where you would normally find your uh, wiper stalk. You may have heard the sound of the camera coming down there but, but that's it. And as I say, you, you can actually, the, the vehicle will park itself and it's, it's probably one of the more advanced systems to be fair. It breaks itself and it changes from reverse into uh, drive. So if I just if I just put that in drive, it says checking the entire surroundings there. But if I click the park button there, there you go. Then it's it's a different menu, and it looks for a parking space there, and it's looking on the right hand left. Well, I, I, anybody could park on here. So we'll just go back to if you crazy crazy thing really, if you want to uh, use the command here you can click home there or home there or if you know what you want to use we've actually got a lot easier buttons nav radio media telephone and a couple of things I, I find strange about Mercedes-Benz and it, it probably is only me up here you've got the lights for when it's dark you have the lights and it tells you what it is and then the buttons are underneath whereas I tend to go go to press the thing it's it's underneath and it's but it's a nice well-made toggle switch here so that's all good so you press that and the, the you can see the air conditioning your controls if I knock the heat up like so that menu comes up at the bottom it's a, it's a really, really nice car. Very, very economical too. And we've got heated memory seats. I'm just gonna, I'm not far enough back here. Uh, I thought I'd set the, I thought I'd set the position one before, but I mustn't have done, because that's not where I want to be. You've got three position memory. You've got heated seats here, which I'm gonna whack on, because I'm freezing. And you've also got another um, little button there and if you click that button you can actually switch your passengers heated seats on <laughs> so especially and you can also move it so hang on we'll do that again so there I can move the passenger seat from my control so if your passenger falls asleep you can put his or her heated seats on and push them right up against the dashboard. You may be able to see the mood lighting. Um, 
it's uh, as I say, it's pretty good. I, I particularly like this red glow on it, uh, and it does look very nice at night. And it matches my sunglasses. But of course, nobody wears sunglasses at night, do they? We've got electric tilt and slide steering wheel. You've got your cruise control here, which you can't really see. It's just behind the uh, quarter two position of the steering wheel uh, or I can't see it if I look down I, I probably can and it's a speed limiter too if I just knock that up that's set the cruise if I keep knocking it up it will increase the speed and if I knock it down it will decrease the speed I think uh, let's just see and just do that again so that's on so if I pull it towards me what does that do? That was probably resume. Away from it, you knocks it off. Pull it back, that's resume. If you click the end in, you can set a speed limiter. So you've got sat nav anyway. Um, you've got Bluetooth hands-free, Bluetooth audio streaming. I think the Burmeister speakers, although normally it says on them and they're silver, so I could be wrong. But anyway, it's a good sound system. If I just manual, it'll be on an audio book at the moment, I think. So let me just see. Um, if I knock that up, we're just coming to certain death corner, so I'll wait till we get round here. Listen for a beat back. Do big tractors have horns very good specification ah you probably wouldn't have noticed but that's a pan roof or twin pan roof if I click that up like so that's it tilt and then I can slide back. Put it back. That's it. So it makes, completely changes the interior of the, the vehicle. I'm gonna stop and put my sunglasses on sun's risen over there and it's quite bright it's a reasonable place to stop okay I'll probably steam up now Swig your tea while I'm at it. You've also got just forward of the parking, you have this dynamic select, and that's showing it shows on the dash here and over here on your information display on your screen. You can see individual and knock it back. That's Sport Plus. There you go. And that's showing engine sport, steering wheel sport, and stop start off. Knock it back into comfort, comfort and comfort, and eco or stop start on, and then eco, which is eco engine setting, which. which If I'm honest, it's awful. It just it, it, when <laughs> pe when petrol didn't used to be that good, we used to have a lot of problems with what they call pinking, and that was the engine running on or knocking, and uh, it it'd be the fuel igniting. 
it's still igniting in the cylinders even though you, you didn't want it to. That's a, a very simple explanation. Um, but it, it would also make the engine knock, this, this noise called pinking. And they came up with this idea, anti-knock sensors, which were basically little microphones. And the microphones in the engine, when they uh, detected this pinking or knocking, he's going too fast. When they detected this pinking or knocking, no, 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 I wouldn't hear of it, you're welcome, don't worry. <laughs> um, when they detected this knocking, they would retard the engine, or retard the engine, and it would make it feel like the car had got no guts. That's basically what Eco does. It makes the, feel, the car feel like it's got no guts at all. In comfort, um, or individual, I would probably choose the Sport, the engine Sport, setting and the steering wheel comfort but comfort is just a i always say it, these car manufacturers spend millions and millions of pounds getting the cars to run perfectly they're all experts and then they give it to <laughs> joe private in the street and let him fiddle about with the controls i mean what what could possibly go wrong Comfort's great. Mercedes-Benz, lovely car, well built, dashboard all nice, all nice premium materials, just little touches, the, the contrast stitching. I prefer the screens that are built in, not that look like they've just been stuck on with a, a thing from Halfords and you know you just plonked an iPad on your dashboard and this is all this is class, really. This black wood, this matte black wood, which I particularly like. It's only when you really look at it that you can see that, um, you know, you can see the grain in it, whether, whether it be plastic or actual wood, I don't know. And then the gloss black here. With the gloss black, with a gloss black or even walnut, you get quite a lot of reflections. Um, not so with the, the matte black wood, of course. Plenty of room, plenty of luggage room. You can put the back seats down, fold them flat, or, or, or as you see, you just press a button and they just collapse, which is, which is fantastic. Let's just see if I can uh, go over to here. Oops. Music, music, music there. So, great display. I'm just gonna, let me see, turn this up. So volume's, volume's well up, and then I'll just click play. Now, that demonstration will probably be lost on you because you'll be listening on your little iPhone or your computer speakers, which are rubbish, but it, honestly, the, the speakers in here and the, the, the separation, just superb. Nice steering wheel, the aluminium finish in the centre here. So you've got these, I, I'm just not really, in, in cars, touch pads like this and that. It's you're just guaranteed to, to select the wrong thing just as you're about to click it you'll go over a bump it'll slide over to something else and then you have to mess about going out of that program and, and back into whatever you want let's say the, the home button there if I click on home and then I can move across like that far better you can disable that um, system is it in system click in system display and styles input audio connectivity um, that's that's not it oh display and styles you can have this set up it shows you g-forces <sighs> you'd never 
you never use it. I mean, you're not going to go around the track in a, an E-class estate, but it does look quite good. Input, let's see, input, there you go. I mean, what does that mean? And click input. Touchpad, ah, that's the one I was looking for. Touchpad sensitivity or touchpad. So you can actually knock the touchpad off there. And then that touchpad makes it perfect, hand steadier. You just click on it like, or put your hand on there like so, and then you can use the rotary control. That's the best idea. So we'll just go back. Stop messing about with these controls when there's a big ditch down at that side. You've got paddle shift on the steering wheel like so. But why would you use it? Overtaking, um, going downhill when you turn a caravan. Apart from that, the Mercedes gearbox is superb. So for instance there, we're just going up the hill, get to the top, if I let my foot off the accelerator ever so slightly, it'll just change gear, you don't even notice. It's five degrees outside, feels a lot colder, and my uh, DJI action has just overheated even though it's got the anti overheating cover on it it seems to be a lot of people driving too fast today There's a dynamic select assistance. Ah, it's got lane departure warning. It's also got the um, blind spot monitoring, which is great. This tells you your consumption there. Um, click on consumption. That gives you, I mean, look at that. That's this morning. That's while it's been ticking over, but that, that was coming up here. Overheated again. Okay, I, th these cameras always get me going on, on electric cars. I bought, last, last week I bought, this is a GoPro 11, a full size one. Um, they, they were bringing out two small ones. I, I bought this small one because these cameras really, you've seen how many they are, they, they take up too much room and they, they look daft. So I bought these small ones, I bought that small one. I was gonna replace all my GoPros with them, but they overheat and they don't, they just, don't work. Anyway, GoPro brought out two, a, a new GoPro Mini, so I ordered two of those, 700 quid. Within a week, <laughs> they'd both broken. Um, there was a red light on them, they wouldn't switch on, they wouldn't switch off. The battery, the, the worst thing about the GoPro Mini is the battery isn't removable, so you can't really do a hard reset and take the battery out. So it was just stuck with the red light and I've had to send them back, but I've ordered two more of these. You know, and when something mechanical sticks, you can fix it. When something electrical sticks, you're knackered. So, and also for the first time they've admitted, used electric vehicles are up 200% on uh, Auto Trader, um, I, I've been saying this for a while. The, all the dealers have them. The, the publications are going on saying what fantastic sellers electric vehicles are, but they're not. 
the, the dealers are fantastic at registering them as uh, as demonstrators and, and hire cars and you name it. They're not fantastic at selling them and they end up in used car stock. So the sales figures went up. It allowed the media uh, to <laughs> extol their virtues and all, all these people that think you should be driving round in one. But anybody who's got a choice buys a diesel or a petrol uh, and that's even considering you could get salary sac sacrifice and electric cars are a whole lot cheaper. It's just, um, you know, don't believe everything you see in the news. You can't beat a good diesel, especially now. They're so economical and clean as well. Anything I've not mentioned. Now let me just say, you might be able to see from here, I've just let my foot off the accelerator, we're going downhill, the consumption figures. There's, there's a green band on the right, which is your charge going into your battery, and it's shot up. That's the digital speedo that you can have. So you just change them from these, these thumb pads. That's your eco display there. Again, it's, it's pretty much all green, um, except the car has been ticking over while I videoed it. So that's brought it down a bit. The display again. Um, there we go. Connect. That's Apple CarPlay system. Input audio connectivity. Command touch. Yeah, well, that's not what we want. Back into vehicle. Click back. Oh, light settings, ambient light, that's the word I was looking for before. I always call it mood lighting, but uh, light settings. So we go there, ambient light, surround lighting. Um, you see it's, it's red there, but if you click on ambient lighting, you, you can click where you want it, front or rear, entire vehicle, the colour. There you go. I don't know what that was. There's some, oh, it's, that's clicked off altogether now. Yeah, so you can change all the colours, but I, I've got to admit, I do like that red, so I'm going to leave it there. So that's it, I'll, I'll leave the, the test drive there, but it's a lovely car. It's a really, really nice car. Um, I can't find anything wrong with it, the, the way it runs, or it, it's just it's just beautiful. So uh, I'm sure you'll be pleased. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.